In this video, we're going to extend our bubble chart here. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new chart type, but with the foundation from the bubble chart and make these rectangle shapes instead of round shapes. So let's start to look how to extend the bubble chart. So what we're going to do here is using a bubble chart, but create a new chart with the foundation of the bubble chart. To do this, first of all, we need a border template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started and this link you can find as well in the description box once you're on here scroll down and copy this chunk of code here and then convert it into a bubble chart so now what we want to do is we want to create a new bubble chart what what i will name as the rectangle rectangle bubble chart here there we are so this we want to make sure that chartjs recognize this new chart type to do that, what we need to do here is first of all create a class, and this class will be called the Rectangle Bubble. We will extend this, and extending it would mean we borrow the foundation from the bubble chart, and then we add up something that we want. So to do that, we're going to say chart with capital C dot bubble with capital B, controller with capital C. So once we did this, we want to say here to draw the chart itself. And then what I want to do is I want to say here super dot draw. This is very important for us because this super draw will draw every argument from uh, arguments from the bubble controller or basically the bubble chart. Of course, if I save this, refresh, open up the developer that we get here is not a registered controller. It doesn't understand what we're doing yet because we just created something without registering it. So what I'm going to do is three specific code lines. I'm going to say first of all, I'm going to say here rectangle bubble dot ID to make the ID or at least the type recognizable. So that will be this put in here. Next, what I want to do is I want to say here this rectangle bubble dot defaults. So I'm going to get here all the defaults equals chart dot bubble controller. Pay attention to the capital letters dot default so basically we want to have the default values from the bubble chart also being transferred directly into the rectangle bubble extended chart type that's basically what we're doing we're grabbing here the defaults very useful next what i want to do is i want to register it i'll say chart dot register and then we have register our uh, rectangle bubble if i refresh here now you can see it already works basically it is now a new type it's not bubble, but it's rectangle bubble. But if I save this, you can see here, there's no difference. Meaning we just really copied one to one. Now we have this done. What I want to do, of course, is now extend this with our own options. So what we can do here is basically create a constant with CTX because I want to draw in the canvas. So we're going to do this and then we're going to say here, this equals this dot chart dot CTX. This here. This specific code allows us to draw in the canvas of our chart area. So that's what we want to do here. Then what I want to do is I want to use a special option here, which is a built in chart.js functionality. It's called the uh, this dot get meta and then dot data. So let me just do a console log so you can see what is in here. Basically what's in there is the data of our point elements from our uh, bubble chart. So you can see here, that's all of these items here. And what is really important for me is the X and Y coordinates. So we can do an object destructuring with that. And then we can say here, for example, I want to make these rectangle items. We can say here, background color or border color in here. Let's start to work on this right now. Because this is a console log, I need to remove that. I want to put it in here. But this here gives us access to four data points. So this is an array, meaning we're going to use a for each loop to loop through all these data points. So I'm going to say here for each, and then I'm going to say here for every data point here. And let's give this a P capitalized. And of course, what we need to do here, a data point function arrow, make sure we have that correctly done or else we'll get an error. Try to brace between there. All right, so in here, what I want to do is I want to extract what exactly? I want to extract X, Y value, and in the options, I think we can get the border color and the border width. 
However, these items here will be referred to whatever the border color is here and the border width here. That's all from the data itself. So we're not going to add up our own items. We're going to get it from the data dynamically. So that's very important. So what we're going to do here, uh, constant, and we're going to say here, this is an object destructuring. If you don't know what object destructuring is, please watch my video about charges, um, understanding charges, object destructuring. Of course, we don't need charge here because what we need to do here is we need to get basically this data point. That's the shorthand for that. Then what I need is the X value, the Y value, we have more, we have, um, we have here even the uh, options and in the options, I'm going to break down and we'll be getting a few items, border color comma border width, and it will be another one, but I will get to that later on. So now we have this, what I want to do next is say ctx dot save to save all variables above. And then we can start to draw here. So what I'm going to do here now is ctx dot stroke style for the color. What will be the color? Well, let's make this black for now, or while we don't even have to do it, we can just get the border color here immediately. So we don't have to do it uh, one by one. Next one, what we can do is here is the ctx dot line width, indicating how many pixels the text will be, but that will be just the border width. If you look at it, the border width here, we could even do hover effects, anything you want could be done. But the border width here is one. So I'm going to grab that, put that in there. So now we have this final item is CTX dot stroke rectangle to draw the item. And what we need for this is the X coordinate, the Y coordinate. And then we have here the width and the height. The width and height is slightly tricky because look at this uh, width here has basically this ray. Well, basically this is a circle shape so what we have to figure out is how many pixels is from this point all to there so we have to figure that out and i'm going to show you later on how we get that but to make it simple i just say i'm going to put in here 10 for width and height and then the x and y values are already in here so what we're going to do here is just save this then refresh and you can see here now what's going on so we get a 10 pixel here but of course i want it dynamic let's refresh this so how can we get this here? Well, there is a nice trick for that. So let's refresh the console log here. Uh, I'll be needing the data points here again. The data point, save, refresh. So now we have this here. Open up this, and then we go down in the options, and we have here the radius. What this radius does is indicating the pixel radius of this point. However, a radius is seven pixels that would mean from this point to here to whatever the ending is so it's from the center to the end so that's only a small fraction however i'm going to grab this radius I'm going to put it in here now let's add up the radius here and there save this refresh now as you can see here now this is all nice but it only takes 25 percent of the shape so what we have to do is the radius needs to be here multiplied by two so we're going to say here to multiply radius and then here as well to multiply by radius. Save that, refresh. Now we get this, but the drawing starts at this very center. So what we have to do is we have to move it a bit more to the left. How much exactly? Well, basically a radius. So let's move it to the left radius by saying X minus the radius. Save that, refresh. And as you can see here now, we're moving it, but now we have to move it up as well. And how much exactly? Same amount of radius. So we say here, minus radius for the Y, and then we push it up beautifully. All right, so now we have this here. So remember I said here, this will draw all the arguments of our item. Let's hide this, save that, refresh. And now what is happening completely different. It is now a square without using the circular shape of the bubble, as you can see here. But of course, how would you be able to get the background color? Well, let's do that one as well. Remember, we get all these items from basically borrowing from here. So we can do now the background color, same story. So we're just going to say here, not a comma. I'm going to say here instead of border color, background color. So if I save that, refresh, nothing happens yet. Why? We need to now implement this. 
So how do we implement that? Well, basically in here, we're going to say here, enter. They say ctx dot, we're going to say here, fill style for the background color. And the background color will be this item here. Put that in there. Save this. If you refresh, still nothing happens. Why? We didn't indicate to draw the background of it. How do we do this? Because this one here for the stroke rectangle indicates the rectangle uh, border lines. But now what I want to have is the fill rec. And this here, we can just grab all of this, put that in there. Semicolon, save that, refresh. And now look at that. It will work and it even expands accordingly because it understands all the logic that we had from the bubble chart. Let's uh, double check this by saying here, border width, and then we can do maybe a hoover border uh, or a hoover. Uh, well, we can do a hoover border width, for example. Let's make that three. Save that, refresh. Now, as you can see here, it will just convert it and also trigger that nicely.